Did you know Baha'u'llah wrote to the kings and rulers of his time? Nobody really talks about this and I think it's time that we do. So first of all, we need to know that Baha'u'llah came and he came at a time the world needed uh, unity, right? Because there was a lot of war, there was a lot of uh, problems with citizenship. So Baha'u'llah came at this time where it was promised in all the books, you know, uh, all the religious scriptures, all the prophecies, Baha'u'llah came and fulfilled it. So it was imperative that someone like Baha'u'llah, a personage coming uh, to this earth with a message from God, fulfilling all the prophecies, to m send letters to these kings and rulers. He sent them uh, all over the place. Link right below in my description, you can see the book called The Summons of the Lord of Hosts this is where Baha'u'llah talks about uh, things that these kings and rulers need to do. They need to turn to God, listen to his will for his time, to bring the most great peace that humanity has been waiting for. Um, basically, it was uh, around, around 1867 roughly. At that time, Baha'u'llah was also in prison in, um, in Adirne, which is Adrianople, which is very close to Istanbul, Turkey today. Um, a little bit west and uh, so he wrote to many kings and rulers uh, but the two of them I'm gonna mention Napoleon the third and Queen Victoria this is what uh, Napoleon responded to Baha'u'llah when he when he received the letter if this man is of God which is referring to Baha'u'llah if this be of God then I am two gods so Napoleon responded to Baha'u'llah in a very uh, sort of childish way saying yeah right you know if you're a god i am god uh something like that baha'u'llah responded uh as a way of uh telling napoleon you know since you didn't listen to me this is what's gonna happen for what thou hast done thy kingdom shall be thrown into confusion and thine empire shall pass from thine hands as a punishment for that which thou hast wrought he treated baha'u'llah as if he was a lunatic and that's how he responded to him. So approximately, after Napoleon uh, responded to Baha'u'llah that way, three years later... At Sedan, France was defeated. <laughs> Effectively, the war was over. But the contrast between Napoleon and Queen Victoria is this. Queen Victoria, this is what she responded after she received the letter from Baha'u'llah. She said, if this is of God, it will endure. If not, and can do no harm. That's pretty cool. I, li I, li I really like how she responded, you know? She gave Baha'u'llah a benefit of a doubt. Queen Victoria was like, if this is from God, then you know it will last. If not, n there won't be no harm. So she was very sympathetic and responded very nicely. I would say hence the reason why. She reigned for longer than any other British monarch. She put her stamp on the 19th century. And by the time of her death, Queen Victoria was at the head of the greatest empire the world had ever seen. This was a history of our time in our world, but the world doesn't know that it's uh, really at the heart of uh, our existence, you know? And that's why I think there is a lot of problems today because of the uh, decisions that kings and rulers and people made centuries ago, millennia ago, uh, it's brought us to the kind of consequences we are facing now. So I hope this was helpful. This was really to show you that, you know, I, I want to put this out there. Baha'u'llah sent letters to the kings and rulers. He also sent them to people. Um, he didn't really think that kings and rulers were ultimately the only way that the world would get better. But because of their position, the, the station that they had occupied, uh, ruling over people, that their ultimate purpose should have been to bring about peace rather than um, do things that was in, the, in their own interest. If you like this video, I hope uh, you can share it. Give it a thumbs up and uh, see you guys next time.